quantum computing isn't quite fully baked yet, and we're really not sure how long it'll take until it's ready to go, but there is plenty we can be doing to prepare ourselves for when quantum computing can do real work. I'm Beth Motter here with Tiernan Ray. Tiernan, you're going to have to explain this to me. What can I be doing to get ready for when quantum computing is ready to go? Well, the first thing is you said it exactly right, Beth. Quantum is not fully baked. We have these basic quantum computers from Google. We have one from Honeywell. These are lab experiments, more or less. And people are starting to try to do real work. Uh, companies are like JP Morgan Chase are customers of Honeywell. Uh, but the computers are still fairly simple. We're talking about 10 qubits. These are basically the, the components of a logical gate of a computer. So they can do basic kinds of algorithms to compute in very basic ways, but it may take a decade before these computers can do the equivalent of something like a spreadsheet, something like that. So in the meantime, the question is, most people would say like, why should I even be paying attention to quantum until the machine's ready? We spoke with this startup, Zapata Computing, which is a startup in Boston. They have a tool, which is a development tool that lets you write algorithms that you can then send to a quantum computer. So you write it on your laptop, you then upload it to the quantum computer when you get time to use these, these are like timeshare systems. And the CEO, Christopher Savoy, told us, you should be working on quantum now because there are all kinds of things you're gonna to need to figure out about your data, about the projects that you have, that could take you a decade of refining before you even put them on a quantum system. Quantum systems are expensive, um, they take time to process, and so you kind of need to do a lot, a lot of work in prep to be ready for these kinds of systems. Okay, so if I'm looking to prepare myself, do you have like some quick tips, some quick ideas for things I should be doing? Sure. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to look at um, the basic preparation stages. Christopher Savoy, the CEO, was saying to us, 95% of the issues that his customers run into when they're using his tool to set up a quantum program is just basic data prep, things called ETL, extract, transform, and load. This is where you look at the data you have in a conventional database uh, that you, let's say you're going to run some kind of program for data analysis theoretically on a quantum computer, you need to get ready uh, all of the values, make sure the data is in proper format. Um, you may need to find ways to load the data into your program that are in parallel to speed up the loading because all of the things that happen in the conventional world on normal computers with data get magnified when you're using this abstruse, complex, only partially understood world of quantum computing. So what he's saying is, all the things that you kind of breeze over or happen anyway in IT get magnified as problems for you. And so he's saying, fix them now uh, with your programs before you plan to load anything onto any kind of quantum computer. Yeah, fix the smaller issues before they get too much bigger and on these super expensive elaborate machines. Exactly. Uh, Tiernan, anything I missed that I should have added? Well, the, the, you shouldn't be too skeptical of quantum, even though this sounds like this stuff is, you know, never going to be here because we say, you know, it's kind of half baked at the moment. Um, people like Savoy, who've been working on technologies for decades, have seen these kinds of issues with things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. You know, everyone's talking about machine learning now, but 20 years ago, when in fact, Savoy was working on this, he was part of a team that built the technology that ended up becoming Apple Siri. This is natural language processing. And he was saying, you know, 20 years ago, we couldn't get it working really the way we wanted to because we didn't have 3G or, or 4G wireless connections. We didn't have beautiful OLED screens with beautiful user interfaces. We had the rudiments, but the science was real and we knew it would happen. And so he's saying, despite all of these issues and despite quantum not being fully baked, somebody's going to have the iPhone of quantum. Maybe in a decade, somebody's going to have a system that has all the pieces in place to do real work and it's suddenly going to take off like the app store did and that's when you want to be able to have had all of this background of learning developing working with algorithms cleaning up data doing data prep so that you're ready for the app store moment of quantum if you will yeah you never want to be caught just kind of sitting there twiddling your thumbs when innovation's ready and you've had what a decade at least to probably sit and prepare you lose you lose Absolutely, Tiernan. Well, thank you for that. And for all things quantum and tech, be sure to stick with ZDNet.